There are just over two weeks remaining in the regular season and our Oakland A's are firmly in the American League wildcard hunt alongside the Tampa Bay Rays and the Cleveland Indians. Now, people often say free to crowd and would have to agree in this case, so long as we're not the ones to get kicked out of the bed. Or, you know, a playoff place. You know what I mean. Oakland A's UK Oakland A's UK Hello and welcome to Oakland Days UK YouTube. I'm Matt Smith and as you can see I've gone a bit fancy this week. I've got the green screen out so let me know what you think and how it looks in the comments below and of course like, share and subscribe as always. Now I'm sure you're as excited as I am as to how the week has gone so far. What we have to describe as a statement series win against the Astros in Houston three games to one, not least getting the better of Justin Furlander in game four. Fantastic to see and has really set the A's up for the next two weeks. So in this video, we're going to have a look at the schedules for the A's, the Indians and the Rays the rest of the way. Now I know it can be a bit of a dangerous game looking at things on paper and seeing which games you might win, which you might not. But the A's do look like they've got a decent schedule over the next two weeks. So let's see how the three teams compare. Let's start by taking a look at the standings as we head into the weekend series on Friday. The A's, after their series win against the Astros, are now 87 and 60 and have vaulted to the top of the pops for the AL wildcard. We're a half game ahead of the Tampa Bay Rays, who are 87 and 61, and a further half game ahead of Cleveland Indians, who are 86 and 61. We'll start by having a look at Cleveland's schedule because they've got the biggest series of the lot this weekend. Cleveland Indians are hosting the Minnesota Twins this weekend in a three game series. And in fact, Cleveland aren't too far away from the American League Central. The Twins lead it by three and a half games. So if Cleveland can sweep the series, well, they're right back in it, just a half game behind. Having said that, if the Minnesota Twins take advantage of them, they can pretty much put Cleveland out of the American League Central race and make them focus on the wild card. And of course, that would be good news for the A's because they would have dropped some games too. After the series against the Twins, the Indians move on to face the Detroit Tigers at home. And that's a favorable matchup because the Detroit Tigers have already lost over 100 games so far this season. They also get to face the Chicago White Sox, or another team in the lower reaches of the American League Central, potentially for them to take advantage of. But the other two series they've got are against formidable opponents from the National League East, both in the National League wildcard race. Firstly, they host the Philadelphia Phillies, and then they're going to finish up against the Washington Nationals in the nation's capital. Now, Washington are in a decent position holding first place in the wild card, but they may well still be having something to play for during that final game series because they're obviously going to want to get home field advantage for the wild card game. So, plenty of things riding on that final series, and it will be a difficult one for Cleveland to get many wins from right at the death. Moving on to the Tampa Bay Rays, they're in Anaheim this weekend, taking on the Angels in a three game series. Now, I'd say it's debatable that the Angels are going to do us much of a favour this weekend because Shohei Otani is now out for the rest of the season with another injury. Even Mike Trout has been hobbled this week with a foot injury, so the Angels don't have a lot to throw at you anyway. But if Trout is debatable in he's starting, Otani is out when, well, you've got to say it's an opportunity for the Rays to pick up a couple of wins, maybe even a free game sweep. But hopefully the Angels can do us a favour and the Rays will then be staying in LA for a tough two game series against the Dodgers. Even though the Dodgers have already clinched the division in the NL West, you know they're going to be going all out to keep racking up some wins. So that's a tough series for the Rays to get anything out of. Now speaking about tough series, it then remains a difficult challenge for the Rays because they have a crucial six game homestand with four games against the Boston Red Sox and two against the New York Yankees. Now the Yankees are flying away with the American League East, that's fair enough. But manager Aaron Boone has been talking about the crucial thing about trying to earn home field advantage for the playoffs. And so you can bet your bottom dollar that the Yankees are going to be going out to get a couple more wins against the Rays. 
The Rays will then finish up with a three game series in Toronto. And yes, the Blue Jays have been a bit shaky this year. They've racked up plenty of losses, but they've got some exciting young talent there. And you'd like to think that they want to end the season on a high note at home with a good home series. So hopefully the Blue Jays can take a few wins against the Rays if we need them at that point. And now we come to the most important part, the A schedule. We've got 15 games remaining, and as we're out on top at the moment, our destiny is in our own hands. If we can do well over the next 15 games, then we should be fine regardless of what Cleveland or Tampa Bay do. We start things off this weekend in Arlington, our last ever three games in the current Texas Rangers ballpark. It's a good opportunity for us to carry on our winning ways in Texas and get a couple more wins, if not sweep in the three game series against the Rangers. After that, we move on to our final six games at the Coliseum this season. We start off with three games against the Kansas City Royals. That's a good opportunity for us to get some wins, although you've always got to be careful against teams like the Royals at this time of season. They can play the role of spoilers and be a bit annoying. We then have three more games against the Texas Rangers, and then it's off on the road for the final part of the season. We have two games in Anaheim against the Angels and then finish up with four games in Seattle against the Mariners. And isn't it funny how the season has a certain symmetry to it? We started off the season in Tokyo. Hannah and Don from A's UK were out there at the Tokyo Dome watching us taking on the Seattle Mariners. Now the Mariners got the better of us in both games of that series. They kind of had our number at the start of the season altogether. But it's not how you start the season, it's how you finish it. And the A's are certainly finishing it a lot better than the Mariners are this year. Once again. So when you look at it all, what you've got is that the A's have got five series remaining and none of them are against a team with a winning record. The nearest thing to it are the Texas Rangers and they're 74 and 74. So you'd like to think over the next 15 games, there are plenty of opportunities for the A's to get the wins they need to get over the line and to get back into that wildcard game. But to be completely honest with you, I don't really care who the A's are playing. We're such a good team right now that it doesn't matter who we're playing. You fancy us to get a win anyway. We've won so many series recently and whatever we seem to have to face, we find a way through it. The Houston series was a perfect example. Losing game one, 15 to nothing. Everyone thought, oh, well, that's the Astros steamrolling the A's once again. But no, not with Lee's A's. The way they hit back in game two was absolutely incredible. And they backed it up with two more wins to take the series three to one. So this is an A's team and is not scared of anybody. And to be honest, there's no way you could be more excited than we are at the moment as A's fans. You know what? We go through the ups and downs as A's fans, don't we? We have fallow seasons when we're nowhere close, so we're never going to take this for granted. This feeling of being in the running in late September and really knowing we've got not only a chance to get into the playoffs, but to do some damage when we get there. And more than anything, this team just fills you with so much hope for the future. Last year was incredible because we kind of got into the wildcard race when nobody really expected us to do so, even most of us fans. But this year you look at this team and it's not just about what we could do this year, but what this group of players could do for the next two, three, four, five seasons. Just look at the young talent on this A's roster. We've got AJ Puck up with his long hair, flaming fastball, he looks amazing. And then here he comes, he's not a very naughty boy. He's the Messiah, Jesus Lozado. What a free innings he had on his Major League debut against the Astros. Sean Manaya, how well has he done coming back from shoulder surgery? He's looked really good in his first couple of starts, so hopefully he'll get a good off season behind him, although hopefully it'll be delayed a bit by a playoff run and then he'll be really back up to form full-time next year. We'll have Frankie Muntas coming back into the rotation. Don't think that Frankie Muntas is sitting around doing nothing. He's going to be absolutely determined to really show that the start of this year was no fluke. And then you've got other guys. Look at how well Chris Bassett has pitched this year. He's really done a good job of solidifying himself in, a, in the back end of a major league rotation. So you've got a great starting pitching rotation there shaping up. Yes, we need a bit of help in the bullpen, but hey, there's always arms out there that can do that. And then you look at the lineup. Look at the lineup. Matt Olson and Matt Chapman on the corners, as good as you'll get anywhere. We've got Ramon Laureano out in the centre field. Again, as good as you'll get anywhere. We've now got Sean Murphy up. He's going to be our catcher for years to come. He's already shown he can find the Crawford boxes at Astros Ballpark. So that's great to see. And he's going to be a great addition, a really cornerstone player for us for years to come. 
And then there are other guys out there too. We've got Sheldon Noisy up getting a few major league at bats. Seth Brown, is he going to be a big part of our future? I don't know, but he's shown he can be capable of causing a surprise and knocking a few long balls out of the ballpark. He certainly did that at AAA this year, so maybe he can be another Brandon Moss type of player who's a late bloomer who really comes in for two or three years and gives us a big push. You know, there's lots of talent on this team and most of the talent is going to be around for several years to come. So it's something to be really excited about as A's fans. A great young team, building together and really showing the rest of the league what we're made of. So there we go. I hope you're excited about this weekend's series against the Rangers. I certainly am. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And of course, follow along on all of our social media channels in terms of Oakland Day UK on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Hi, Matt Smith. Thanks a lot for watching. Yeah, we're the Oakland.